Hello viewers, and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. Uh, today we're going to the Darkest Dungeon. I started provisioning before I uh, started recording, because I'm absent-minded. Um, I suppose I should just fill these stacks up, because why not? Um, this is our party. Coulombier, the, uh, the Crusader. Equipped with an Ancestor's Pen. I'm pretty torn on this one. I kind of want to equip him with um, a Stun Chance Trinket. But this is I, th I think this is where I want to go instead. Let's just kill stuff, right? Kur the Jester. Uh, this guy is going to be doing Dirk Stabs and Finales all over the place. and I brought Inspiring Tune... Because if you finale, uh, it puts this huge debuff on you. You can see there, minus 40% damage. It makes it kind of hard to want to fight again. So we need something to do on the uh, on the other turns after he's finaled. And curing people of their stress seems okay. You can also Dirk Stab or have somebody do something that moves them backward. And then start harvesting because um, the bleed doesn't lose damage from the debuff, but uh, you probably want to be doing harvests at the beginning of combat rather than at the end. Oh, let's make sure we equip everybody's camp skills. I bought people camp skills and perhaps did not... Okay, everybody everybody else is fine. We're good. Uh, Blosbeville, the occultist, bringing kind of an unusual trinket. Uh, I don't use a lot of these typed damage trinkets, and in fact I've talked before about how I think they're quite bad, because in almost all dungeons, even even dungeons that are strongly typed, like in the Warrens, where you're going to face a lot of pig monsters that have the beast type, you're still also sometimes going to have to fight other stuff, you know, there's those, uh, the creepy lamprey mouth worm dudes, and there's humans everywhere in all of the dungeons. Uh, but down here, I'm pretty sure literally everything is eldritch. So... In this case, I think it's probably worth bringing these. And I tend to sell off those trinkets very quickly, but it might actually be worth holding on to some Eldritch Slayer's Rings now that we know how the Darkest Dungeon uh, works, now we know stuff about it. So yeah, don't don't use these all the time, but go ahead and hold on to a couple. Um, so this is my party. Uh, we're hopeful. That's what I can say for us, is that we're hopeful. Uh, unfortunately, this party brings a lot of garbage to the dungeon. Like, a shovel? I know we don't need shovels. Uh, obviously, I went right down to the wire on our gold. Uh, we still do have trinkets and stuff that we could sell off, but upgrading everybody, making sure everyone was in was in good condition, was expensive. So we better not lose these people, or else we're going to have to run uh, some boring missions to get our gold back up. We're probably going to have to do that anyway. I'm not going to want to go right back into right into Darkest Dungeon 3 without uh, the money necessary to upgrade all the heroes who are going on it. Alright. Torches. Food. The thing that we need for the quest. Everybody's got their trinkets on. Everybody's gear and skills are all level 5. Okay. Here we go. The thing has no name. For it needs no language. Nevertheless, those who would submit to its word this will are rewarded in a fashion. The creature's blessings are as repulsive as they are robust. Twisted half-human monstrosities stalk the flesh-ridden halls, protecting their gestating god. No pressure, though. <clears throat> Alright, this is... This was a bit of a nightmare last time. Madness made flesh. It crawls steadily upward from the pit, supported by the lattice of Cyclopean pillars. No doubt. Oh, hey, the Rapturous Cultists aren't Eldritch, but also they're not threatening. <clears throat> these are the things that actually deal damage. As far as I've seen, these only guard and heal, and these only guard and heal. So, let's, uh, let's get in there. A pretty okay start. As the 
fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Well, okay then. Uh, these things have a lot of bleed resist, actually. Ow. That's inconvenient. It was just about to be... smashy time. He has nine speed. He should, uh, he should usually be... Usually be getting there. Okay, these things do have an attack. No, you know, I've totally seen that attack before. I don't know what I was thinking. Ah, uh, insufficient. Really insufficient. Oh, uh, that's frustrating. I, I would like to just use his heal ability on himself, but I don't want to give this thing another turn. We brought a lot of bandages. We brought a lot of bandages for precisely this reason. Okay. Now give yourself a little. Okay, well. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. So as you can see, I tried to bring a uh remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. I tried to bring a party that's capable of dealing with being shuffled a lot. Well, let's just... I don't know whether that's going to happen a tremendous amount here, but I do know that we brought a Jester. And Jesters tend to shuffle the party up with their, uh, their dancing about, their gambling back and forth. Alright, last time one of the quest things was down here, so... We are not using a tremendous number of sun rings. Do we? Okay, we did bring two. So it is important for me to manage our. Uh... Wow, nicely done. Strike. It is important for me to manage our uh... our light. Continually onslaught. Destroy them all. Well, that's a shame. I am like for real sure that these guys don't actually attack though. Minimum damage. <clears throat> we knew that was going to happen. I was kind of hoping to goad this guy into healing. We're less concerned about a heal than we are about the guard. Because we would just beat the heal. Well, see, a heal while the guard is up is a little more annoying. Right, that took way too many moves. Damn. I was really hoping it wasn't going to get another turn. Our Crusader only has five speed, but this thing has four. And it has consistently beaten him. As victories mount, so too will resistance. I'm willing to expend items to prevent eight damage from occurring. Absolutely. I don't know if the layout for this mission is actually the same every time. It might not be. Oh, this also is, like, totally the wrong order. Let's do that. Alright. Last time this room was full of horrifying scorpion monsters that totally ruined us. Yep, same deal. Okay. So this may very well be the same as the last time where it, uh... Alright, the Warlord has less health. Slightly more dodge. Actually, pretty low bleed resist for things of this level. Yeah. He's the guy. Um, so this does extra damage versus marked people, and we may be employing the mark... Uh, this reduces people's bleed resist, and that is something to consider given that, you know, we have Harvest on our Jester. But for right now, I think we want to just, like, damage. As much damage as we can get as quickly as we can get it. Yeah, let's just stab him instead of marking. We're doing a significant amount of... 
Oh, we're doing a significant percentage of their HP with these attacks. So let's just try to get through it quickly. I considered going for a stun, but it, only, it had less than a 50% chance of working, and that... I always feel a little bad trying that. Okay. Um, so, that revelation attack <clears throat> is going to be very effective against our grave robber. We have to be careful with her. I think we may actually be able to get these guys down a lot faster than last time, though. Last time, I don't, I don't know that we really brought the appropriate trinkets. Our damage output was just not high enough, I think, last time. Wow, they really love to show him their weird... I'm going to assume genitals? Wow. Damn, Blasperville. Jesus Christ. Oh, God. He's totally gonna die. Uh, <clears throat> well, this is why I brought Crusader with one of his heal skills equipped, so that we would have two chances to get people off of Death's door. Alright, alright, alright. Now they're only getting two attacks per turn, at least, instead of four. Hopefully we can make some, uh, make some value there. <clears throat> this is likely to crit. I don't know that that's a good enough reason to do it. No, we're gonna go one more Dirk Stab. He's going to be so not useful in combat after we, uh, after we drop the finale, so... Wow. Yeah, this is, uh, this is sucking. Okay. So we have to get him off a of Death's Door, because he could die at the beginning of his turn otherwise. And it's like, uh, you know, pretty important that he not die at the beginning of his turn. Excellent. Okay. So let's think about this. We definitely do this. Now somebody has to get healed. I think the Jester's more likely to get attacked. Just purely based on his position. Big crits. No crit. I sh I considered healing our, uh... What's his face? Healing our occultist. Okay, I think we might actually survive this. Oof. Reeling. About to break. Okay, alright. This thing only has five speed, and we probably only need to hit it once. Ooh. Jesus Christ. A trifling victory. But a wait, victory wait, 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 wait. Who knows what's gonna happen when we do this? Everybody eat. So that fight, by the way, was that was the worst I could imagine that going without actually losing anybody. Okay. Nothing, nothing terrible happened to us. Is it safe to assume that one of these things is in each direction? I don't know about safe, but let's, let's make that our assumption for now and head back. We may very well camp here, but we're uh, very low on food already. I do think that we needed to eat. But this is basically what I'm trying to express here is that this is a really bad start. Those things are terrifying. If we have to fight two more groups of those, there's no way we'll win. I got a camp though, right? Yeah. I don't think we are going to eat the feast though. It's a goal without hope. I'm too concerned about our food levels. We really need to not take starvation damage. Alright, so this will prevent the nighttime ambush. I think that's vital. 
We have a little bit of healing available. Well, it's actually quite a bit. So we can do wound care, wound care, gallows humor. That wouldn't be horrible. Zealous speech, sadly, would mean we only get one wound care, and I think that we, uh, we need it too badly. I do not think we have time for a buff. Man, we are in such rough shape. Alright, the occultist needs to be healed. Does she crochet him some bandages? Is that a thing you can do? At least we'll be very excited if, uh, if that turns out to be the case. And then we should heal the jester probably because he's going to be in front more often, incidentally. Yeah, you have to be alive to perform last rites though, buddy. Gallows humor would not be terrible. We could also just wound care and encourage. Like encourage the jester, wound care the uh, the grave robber. This potentially lowers our stress by a great deal, but we may need the HP. I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the HP route. Really. I've never seen that line about the liberal arts university before. That's pretty funny. In radiance, may we Oh, uh, you guys, I do not... <clears throat> this is not going well. I do not feel good. I wish we had a Vestal. The Vestal nighttime ambush prevention skill is crazy powerful if anybody in your team has mortality debuffs. And I think that that's going to be very frequently the case here in the Darkest Dungeon, so um, Vestal's probably at a premium. Right, finish him! No! You left him at one! Alright, well, she got there. Damn it! why can't you just heal yourself? In a way that doesn't, you know affect our plans at all. These guys have seven speed. We do actually have, um, we have some, some speed on them. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. God, he needed to be healed. I don't know if we can afford to eat this food, but I also don't know if we can afford not to eat this food. We need to bring more food. What's your speed? Seven. But you have quick draw. Alright, the occultist's first turn just has to be healing the jester. I really don't want to get into the food. We're going to need to camp again, almost certainly. The light, the promise of safety. Oh man. All right. I chose this one because this is the one the, the um, what do you call him, the Crusader can hit. In case the Crusader's turn came up first. Alright, Flesh Wall there is, um, is fine, actually. <clears throat> Good stuff. Ah, oh, boy. Okay, only four doesn't put him on Death's Door. This is going to uh, and any stun token. Okay. 
Ah, uh, don't heal him now. This is this is the least opportune moment. Alright, well that I I think that just has to happen. We cannot lose somebody yet. Okay, he resisted the bleed. That's good. Uh Boy, your contribution is somewhat limited. We can just yeah, let's just see if we can we did. Great. Stop dazing his mind. <clears throat> there. Good. Alright, big crits. Big crits. Fantastic. Okay, we um We need to take advantage of our ability to stun this guy if we can get a stun off. We're just gonna move you back to here. Okay, come on, stun. The decisive bubbling. Alright. I know it ain't exactly sportsmanship, but we just really need to take advantage of some healing. I do not feel sanguine about getting him again, since we have no stun, uh, or no, um, stun chance increasing trinkets, so let's just go ahead and kill him. He has four speed. What do you have? Seven. Alright, we're gonna try to, uh... I'm going to take a risk here, because I don't think we can win without taking risks. Take a risk, throw out a heal, and hopefully not get hit for more than we just healed for. Yep, okay. That was tremendously negative. Well, not tremendously negative, it was slightly negative. It would be tremendously negative if the battle was going on, but uh, so clearly. we get to remove the bleed right away. So. Or is it merely a trick of the light? I'm not happy about how little health we have. We went into the last one in, like, almost perfect condition. Okay, this is different. Polyps. Oh, good. She resisted the... It's a knockback? Okay. That's not so bad on him, really. Uh, so these things are Eldritch Beasts. They don't really have that much health. But that said, I don't think we can afford to not heal. I said, I don't think we can afford to not heal. I don't think he heard me. Well, we gotta kill these things, right? If we can reduce the, uh, the number of incoming attacks. You know, that's always good. Yeah, just start in on him. The stun's probably not gonna land anyway. Oh no, your weird monster eye, goat eye, penis thing. Right, doesn't it kind of look like a goat eye with the... Maybe you guys don't know. Goats have weird pupils, like really weird pupils. Oh boy. Don't get... Yes, okay. He resisted the blight. Have you guys noticed that they're really, like, really focusing in on our jester? Like, a lot? What do you think that's about? Excellent work. Excellent work. Okay, enough with the revelation. I know. At this point, it's not even a revelation anymore. Ah, it's annoying. I was really hoping that uh, the occultist would be next. Uh, what is my play here? This thing is pretty low. What's your bleed chance? 139? You have a, a pretty significant damage penalty at death's door. Um, so honestly, Dirk Stab may not hit for as much as Harvest, although, actually, we're going to do Dirk Stab because I want to get into position for Finale. Awesome. Okay, good call. Jesus. So much damage, always so much damage. Well, that put us into a uh, finale position right away. What's the stun chance on this? 139? It's not very good. Alright, she can still get the big crits. 
There's another reason that it's nice to have a Vestal on these missions is that um, the enemies just, like, everybody's at death's door all the time. Okay, well, that's probably killed us right there, if I had to guess. All right, we got very lucky on that one. I don't really want to do Finale while he's on death's door. Just do it. Of course, minimum damage, no crit. And here comes the death blow. Ooh. Yeah, now uh, literally everybody except the healer is on death's door. Uh, right, we have to get people off death's door, not just because we want them to survive, but also because they have to be able to deal damage. We need our damage. She can't even attack from where she is. She's going to have to do Shadow Fade. Which is going to do nothing. And his damage is all screwed up. Man. So we're going to have a, a turn here where we do very little damage. One. Well, gets you off Death's Door at least. Please let that stun land. Okay. Unfortunately, that's going to stop him from doing Revelation instead of uh, stopping him from doing something really powerful. I know we want we should probably heal the Jester off Death's Door, but I, I don't think we can afford to not deal damage, honestly. Okay. You could have crit on something that was going to be a little bit more meaningful than a debuffed Dirk Stab, but... Uh, you know what they say about beggars and choosers. 23. So... Ooh, that's right. She's the one who doesn't have the torch. Set the stage for heroism. Come on, virtue. Or cowardice. Not but once. I oh, I'd love to know that story. So this will hit him for three to five, plus four next time he takes a turn, plus probably another four. Yeah, this this has to be right. Assuming the bleed hits. Okay. Please don't hit the grave robber. Oh god. Oh, good dodge. Yeah, I know. I know all about the swirling blackness. You don't have to tell me. Shit. Okay, that was a calculated gamble based on the idea that we definitely would not miss. <laughs> okay, 15's close. Please attack the Jester. Okay, well that's probably the end of the, the dungeon. More disappointment. Yeah. God damn it. Well, we're gonna kill this thing, but we may be so crippled that we have no chance of going on. Champion falls. Foolish horrors. And driven into the mud. <sighs> Let's go back to the hub. We'll go back to the hub. We'll camp again. We can be a little bit more liberal with our food now. Because first of all, I don't think we have that much dungeon left. And secondly, uh, we eat less. I think this expedition is doomed, though. We got closer this time. Circle in the dark. The battle may yet be won. All right. Uh, nighttime ambush would be real bad. We have to get whatever healing on him we can. You know what? Dark Ritual. And then we can do... Two Encourages. We can mock the Crusader. Yeah, let's do that. Which is basically transferring a little bit of a... Uh, 
I forgot that we were totally in the dark. We did that in absolutely the wrong order. Mocking the Crusader before dropping the Torchlight would have made it an even trade. Instead, we just gained a bunch of stress. Alright. Huh. <laughs> How how on earth do you figure? Darkness closes in, haunting the hearts of men. That's fine. We brought torches. Can we go on? Uh, she was a lot of damage. We've done so much of the work. I guess I have two. There, there are two questions to consider here. Uh, number one is whether we have any chance of winning, and number two is whether I think we'll ever be in a better position than this. We have two of the things activated already. If the third fight is two polyps and a scorpion guy, could we beat that? The Pops really don't have that much health. And we have a lot more health than we did, although we'll get we'll doubtless get into a fight between here and there. Alright, we're pushing onward. Okay. Well shit. The a crit. Um, yeah, the uh, the position we're in here, health and stress-wise, at the end of this battle is really gonna come on. How many times is that now that we've reduced an enemy to exactly one in here? Mortality yeah. In a single strike. This is looking pretty grim. He doesn't do enough damage to even kill the thing unless he crits. Yeah. So now we... Yeah, we're out of here. The human mind. Fragile. Like a robin's egg. Like a robin's egg? Really? That's not good. Uh, click, 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 click. Man, maybe we should have just tried to fight our way out. Yeah, let's just... If we kill this... Oh, we only have to control this thing now. We can, we can beat this fight and then leave. God, maybe we can. <laughs> Blossville's like, well, that wasn't a very nice thing to say. That's done. Land that's done. Okay. Yeah, I know. Why don't you just sit back there and guard each other for a while? Okay, if if he would just get hit by our occultist. This could all be over, man. Well, he has to get himself off Death's door, right? That's, that's, I don't think, negotiable. Yeah, this thing where we only get to hit him once a turn is making their healing strategy actually look pretty good. Alright. But this turn, we're going to hit him several times. Except that, uh, now we're weakened from Finale, and occultists, the occultists can literally never hit him. And 
Columbia can't attack on turns when he's not on death's door. Basically. Right. Our cultist has to actually make contact. Or, alternatively, now that he's back in the third row again, maybe just abyssal artillery. Yeah, see, he knew. He knew I was changing tax, and he reacted. That's just poor sportsmanship. We're doing abyssal artillery. I cannot believe that we're losing this fight against one actual enemy. Gotta get him off Death's door. Why don't you, uh, miss? Could you miss, maybe? Just completely miss? Nope. Oh my god, so many little things, like... I don't get to control my characters for... Those who covet for periods that are far too long in Mortal Kombat. Okay. 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 You must do all the slaying yourself. Or any slaying at all. Feel free. Alright, if this sun lands... Of course, that was the time it didn't. Uh... I'm so nervous that I'm going to hit retreat and it's not going to work and then we're going to lose two people, right? Yeah. Well, we're fucked. Death blow. Yeah. Is a tenuous proposition. The thing where the thing where he dodged over and over and over and over. Well, so now there's no way to get out, right? <sighs> my dodges were never going to succeed, or my um, my retreats were never going to succeed, and now we're fucked. Bless Will just has to go on and die on his own, because he can't actually run away by himself, right? Yes. Oh, it didn't... A setback, but not the end of things. I mean, yeah, okay, so one one hero can run away by themselves without the, um... without the darkest dungeon, somebody has to die to hold off the fiends thing happening. Well, that was demoralizing. I felt like we brought a crew that was pretty well suited to the task. My obsession caused this great foulness, and it is shameful that I must rely upon you to set it right. We brought a crew that was pretty well suited to the task, and well geared and well outfitted, and like, honestly, things went pretty well for us for the most part, and we still got nowhere close. Ugh. Alright, well... I believe third time was the charm for the first Darkest Dungeon quest, right? Maybe the third time will be the charm for this one as well. I don't know, what is the... so... this only does have 100 accuracy, I guess, but man, three dodges in a row from a guy who has 24 dodge. The, uh, the odds of that are not spectacular. Oh right, I have no money. But, uh, sell some trinkets and do stuff. All right. Well, I'm not gonna make you. Wa I'm not gonna make you watch me play. Uh, play town manager. Uh, that's it for this. For this episode of Darkest Dungeon, and also for most of another party of legendary heroes. Graveyard's starting to look a little full. Come back next time, when, for some reason, we just keep trying. <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't make any sense to me either, you guys.